In Plymouth, the local museum and art gallery has come up with a novel answer to the old question of how do you interest children in visiting museums? Answer, you take the museum to them. It's Monday morning and Plymouth Museum's transit van is being loaded up. The van will carry over 200 objects, some new, some old, some ancient. This mobility poses a fundamental question for museum staff. What is a museum? A museum is not necessarily a building, it's uh, the collection that's housed within that building and we take our collections out to schools. The practices within a museum are the care of objects, conservation of objects, the collecting of objects. Um, these are the uh, practices that we try and uh, instill in the children when we visit schools. Everything that happens in a museum, uh, the exhibitions and the design uh, and the care of objects, we take those to schools. Natalia. This week's school visit is to Who Primary. This is Roland, I'm Rob. Okay. When we arrive, uh, the children are involved right from the very first point. Uh, they're involved with unloading the van. Yes. Uh, setting up the display, text and graphics. Careful, because you don't want to disturb. It's as if we're a mini museum arriving at school. This is quite heavy. All right. I would so take it from underneath. Get your hands um, under. We don't want a museum to arrive in their school, us set it up, and then deliver a lesson for them. We want them to be taking ownership of this from the off. But this is the main display unit that's going to make up your museum display in your school. OK, I'm going to walk down with you this one and spot it through the doors for you. The display unit's quite heavy. heavy Usually we spot where the unit's going in front of the display, making sure there's no trip hazards on the floor, making sure doors are open, just guiding them through. And that's something that we would do as standard practice anyway in the museum if we're carrying large works of art in and out of the museum space. Um, and then usually also, we usually pick year six, the stronger children, for the, uh, the larger units. OK, off you go. While the van is unloaded, the initial display is set up in the school entrance. Try not to put the big objects standing up in the, at the end of the table, maybe place them in the middle of the table. From my point of view, yeah, it's bringing in people from the museum, coming in with artefacts that the children wouldn't actually experience even when they went to the museum. These are very much artefacts that have been specially chosen for primary children. Um, they match in with the topics that the national curriculum say the children have to cover. We don't have those opportunities uh, and those facilities and those artefacts at hand in our school. Is that a beetle? Yeah, that's a scarab. Well done. Yeah. All right. You get to hold and see things like this, which are phenomenal. It's just incredible, really. Mondays we arrive, we get the van unloaded, get the exhibition display up in a prominent place in the school, get the children involved from the off. Uh, we then have a welcome assembly uh, where everybody in the school is involved. As I said, I work at Plymouth City Museum. What do you think you can find if you made a trip to the museum? What could you find there? I wonder, what could you find there? We were contacted by the deputy head uh, and asked us out to speak to all the staff about what we could offer the school here. We explained how the week would run, their involvement, the children's involvement, the expectations. So you guys get down the seashore and collect objects from the seashore. We've got a natural history department at the museum, which has got lovely collections of objects. Each school will have individual needs. We go to small village schools and we go to large city schools. The needs are quite different, uh, the age ranges are very different, and we're happy to be flexible. Yeah. Old, old bones, old things telling us about things in the past. The schools that get the most out of it are the schools that put the most into it. And that's important, that when we come for a week to a school, the schools which are on board and the schools which involve the whole school, um, and then that's the most successful visit we can make. Just the type of thing for keeping children in control. Every teacher should have one. Any ideas? That lad there. In some schools, only a certain number of classes are actually having sessions in their classes, but the whole school can take advantage of us being in their school. They can use a display for um, some support lessons that are going on with their class teacher. They can use it to support speaking and listening skills uh, and just generally use it as a creative inspiration. She's the highest. Yeah. Because otherwise she would be copying it. But look at, look at that detail. Well, the great thing is these are real objects. The children have got a, a chance to actually get in touch with history, to touch, to feel, to have a kinesthetic experience with these objects. They're here in class, the children sketch them, they feel them, they touch them. They they go to their reference books, they find a picture of the real thing they've held uh, during their session with us. Egyptian or modern? 
They are modern. This particular week, we've chosen our topics, and then we've either taken an arts-based topic or historical angle from it. So in year sixes, we've chosen the Egyptians, but we're also going to do skulls and beasts. FTP are doing fossils, and we've chosen various topics um, all the way up the school. So he's able to come in and deliver some stimulating materials to all the classes. We're just doing a description of one of the artefacts that we've chosen. Death mask. Yeah, we're um, describing about this death mask, death mask here. I'm doing, I'm paying particular attention to the crown and um, the face. It's very rare to be able to have the museum come to your school for a whole week, but it's very common for museums to offer loan boxes to schools. So it's always worth ringing a museum to find out if they do have a loan service or to find out if they're prepared to lend you objects to help you to support okay. your teaching. Yeah. Keep these all week, and when you're doing jobs on museum in transit... Be well, some children, the, con the very word museum is, is, is alien. It's something they cannot relate to or understand. It's something that's traditionally seen as Victorian. So it's a bit of a byword. It's historical based. So for us, museum in transit is, is, is a key tool, really, for getting into their own environments, of its school, in their community centres, in their libraries, get them familiar with the word museum. The Museum in Transit van and staff have been funded by central government through the Renaissance Initiative. Renaissance is a £100 million investment in regional museums in England. It's the first time there's been central government investment in regional museums. It's a programme that's designed to create centres of excellence across the country and it's centres of excellence that will really improve the facilities and the resources that are available for teachers and pupils. So it is enabling museums to take their collections out to schools and allow children to have this experience of, of handling objects in their own classrooms. To start off with, there was one member of staff in the education team. Renaissance in the region gave us the opportunity to expand, so we got five members of staff. And the time and the resources to research what schools needed and how the museum's resources could best match that need. And that can only be done by building up this sustainable relationship with the school and providing something that is so important and so essential to their curriculum and becomes part of their annual programme or their termly programme that we can't imagine living without it. Okay, so there'll be a bit of milling around and we'll... Jill Holland is a professional artist and an education officer for the museum. Look very carefully in the paintings to see where that word is. One of the reasons why we chose the arts for this particular week was because our children don't... They look at things, but they don't really observe in detail. And one of the super things that Jill has done today is that she's taken words for the older children and made the children look at the words and take them to the paintings of the landscapes that she offered to them. They had to think about that. Then she took it a little bit further and took sketches of the original paintings and asked them to match in where they went in the picture. So not only did they have to go up to the correct landscape but then they had to find the right part of the picture. Do you recognise that? It's very tricky because it's smaller than that. And also said how important it was for them to feel it with the idea that they then will portray all those feelings back in their own creative work. What do we think about this artist? He, um, he must have been, the only reason he must have painted it is because he must have wanted to study it and he must have been very obsessed with it. When you start to look at the shapes... And the Jill's hope is that the children will be sufficiently enthused to visit the main museum and its gallery. We've got it's much, much bigger in the art gallery, and that's one thing that often people don't realise, how big paintings are. When the children come to the gallery, they're able to see the work in, in its full glory. They're able to see the brushwork. They're able to see the textures that you're just not aware of when you see it on a printed page. It is just such a different experience. Generally, they're not used to seeing large images. In taking the artworks into the school, I feel that we whet the children's appetite to see more real artworks, to come into a museum and see an art object in, its, in, its con in the context of a gallery, which is a completely different space than school or home. Yeah, that's it, well done. 
For me as an arts coordinator, having Jill in and working in with the children obviously means that we're using someone with particular expertise and particular um, skills and that obviously broadens the children's experiences but equally gives us as teachers um, perhaps new methods, different ways of working perhaps that we haven't used before. Now, this is one of my favourites. For younger children, the starting point is just learning how to look. It's lovely, isn't it? I wonder how long Jill can make use of a range of resources from the museum's varied collections. You don't like it. No, you don't have to like it. <laughs> we don't all have to like the same thing. What do we call it when something is you can see not all the way through? We have a mixture of teachers in the school. We have some very experienced teachers who've, who've done a lot of work in this area and have a lot of experience. Like skeleton leaf. Translucent. Translucent, that's it. For some of our newly qualified teachers, it's definitely been a bonus. Uh, the opportunity to see experts in their field working with the children, uh, to see the way they deliver their particular subject area is obviously a benefit to them. It gives them new experiences, new teaching ideas, and new ways of delivering learning in the classroom for the children. And they're not the same colour as they would be when they're on the trees. If you look out to the leaves out there, they're very, very bright. The children commented that the fact that you know, some were you could see through, the other ones were yellowing. They thought that was nice. That one's like the sunshine, isn't it, then? Yeah. It's like a star. Look, Jack. Jack, this is like a star. The fact that the museum brought the objects and the children enjoyed actually, you know, touching them and looking at them and the observations was fantastic. Uh, so the ideas and the, the different materials she's used has given me some suggestions of, you know, the next time we're doing this type of activity. At Who Primary, the week-long visit is coming to an end, and there's lots to see. It's Friday, and it's the last day of Museum in Transit. We, um, and generally, uh, involve the whole school in a uh, celebration of the week and the museum's visit to the school. A bead. It's wonderful, isn't it? Is this going to go up in class? Where's the teacher in, in charge of this one? Is this going to go up in class? Doing a themed week requires enormous amounts of preparation, but it's preparation which really pays off because if you're going to have objects like that available to your children for a whole week, you really need to build them in to the teaching of all the subjects um, across the whole curriculum. I would like the schools to look at their planning at the beginning of a term as a staff room, as an inset. Are they covering um, topics that are historical or scientific or artistic based? And then they could, like us, plan one week in the term that could be this particular themed week. You want to do the ancient Greeks, but you need to do it from an artistic point of view. That will be different to doing it from a historical point of view. If you need to do skulls and beasts, as part of your literacy, but you'd like to cover it from a scientific base as well. Um, you could explain this to Rob, and then he will bring in all his team with all his super materials he has to offer. Tiger Skull, you are correct. And if you like the idea of museums coming to schools, put your hands up and show me. Fantastic.